Hey everyone, so I want to go through a, vi a very basic video of manual campaigns. Uh, don't mind the, the background here. You'll see a, a Marlin in the back. I'm actually staying in Hawaii for the month, so I got some different decor going on. But again, I want to run through a very basic video of manual campaigns. There's a lot of strategies out there that people use for manuals. There's not one that's right over the other. There's a lot of different strategies. Uh, there's a lot of things that people preach, but I think just the very, very basics are sometimes overlooked. So I wanna run through kind of step-by-step step what I would do for if you just have, say, one product, very small catalog, you're just doing a manual campaign by hand, these are kind of the steps that I would go through. So the product I'm gonna be using is a, a bamboo water fountain. Uh, that you would put in your garden or something. So, but, I mean, one very important thing with manuals because manuals can get, they can get very confusing if in the future you're adding, you have five or 10 manuals. So you wanna just make sure that you're naming it, uh, you know, something very specific. So let's say Bamboo Fountain Research. I think one of the first manual campaigns, and if you think of it, it, it should be a research campaign because you're trying to find what keywords are ranking for your product. You have some data from the automatic campaign, but you're still really looking into this to, to research what keywords are gonna work. So I, I would call this one research. Daily budget, this is this is really up to you. Uh, you know, daily budget, I think for one product, 20 or $30 is, is, is a safe place to start. You can even see here, Amazon suggests most campaigns with a budget of over $30 run throughout the day. Then you select manual, and then you get into the ad groups. Now, for research campaigns, you really only wanna focus on broad and phrase match keywords. These are the, or search terms. These are the search terms that are gonna pull in other search terms and kinda of do some of the work for you before you move into the exact match keywords. So. Your ad group names should be what freight or what match type keyword they're going after. So in your first ad group name, you call it broad and you're only gonna use broad match keywords. We'll select this bamboo fountain here. And then you come down here, Amazon's actually been doing a much better job of their suggested keywords. And I think one of the big red flags is if you come, if you add a product to your campaign you come down here and you see that there's not a lot of suggested keywords. That means that your product is not well optimized because Amazon pulls these from your optimization. They pull it from what you've put into the back end and what you've told Amazon your product is. So some people and some even PPC guys I know, they'll just throw all of these keywords in. They'll add all of these and use that as their broad match. But if you come down here, you'll see that a lot of these start to become not relevant, like water zen, water fountain bowl, Buddha fountain. Some of these keywords can be very, very broad and they can ramp up your spend very, very quickly. So it's, it, it's not a bad idea to kind of use this as a keyword research tool. I mean, you can see indoor water fountain. You know, that's, that's not a bad keyword if you want to rank for it. So this is and kind of what I'm going after right now is, is the whole idea of the keyword research. I think a lot of people, they don't spend enough time on the keyword research. They just, like I said, they throw this long list, list of, of keywords here and they, they hope that it does okay. There's, so the very basic tools I like to use for keyword research are one, I think this is a great start. So if you wanna use some of these that maybe didn't pop into your head and use these to populate, through you know the software softwares you're using, one of the most common ones is Merchant Words. So this is just a look at Merchant Words. If you type in Bamboo Fountain, uh, I think this is one of the older keyword research tools. You'll see here they give you the search volume, uh, the depth. I think this is the how quickly it appears. This is just a very very basic one, and it gives you some ideas. You'll see here that these aren't relevant either, like Bamboo Fountain Pen. Um, but this just gives you a much more extensive list. 
one of my favorite free tools is called keyword.io. You'll see here if you type in bamboo fountain, what this does is this so 21 keywords. So, I mean, it's not a very high volume search term, but what you can do here is you can take this list and then add them. So add them over here. So all this does, this only takes keywords uh, that are on to the end of this. So this is what you know they call a long tail keyword research. It's not gonna mess up the order. It's every keyword is gonna have the keyword bamboo fountain, and then it adds keywords onto it that uh, you know, people are looking for. But this is nice because you can copy this into another search term. But the merchant words, it'll go a little deeper. You know, it'll fountain bamboo, it'll switch up the order a little bit. So those are two very basic ones. Another of my favorite ones that I just found is an actual Chrome extension that you can put on, that you can use for the Amazon search bar. So what I often tell people is use the data that Amazon gives you. So like, you know, this, this data, Amazon is giving you this. Use these to seed your keyword research. Another, another place that Amazon is giving you free data is this search bar. So if you type in bamboo fountain, you usually see all of these, one second here, bamboo fountain. You'll, you'll see all of these keywords that they auto populate. Now this Chrome extension, it's called AMZ suggestion expander. You'll see here, if I just type in bamboo, this is what you would normally see. But what this does is this gives you keywords before, keywords after, and other ones. So it really just expands on this kind of free search bar that Amazon's giving you. And it's just another kind of good idea to, to, to grow your list of keywords. What you can do is you can, if you, you see a new keyword here, you know, you can, you can take it here and then add it into one of your software tools you're using for keyword research. So those are some three very basic tools. Uh, two of them are free, the merchant words you have to pay for, but I think if you're on a very tight budget, you can get away with doing this for free. Now back to the campaign structure. So let's say, let's, let's say we add a few keywords here. Bamboo fountain, bamboo, water fountain, and garden fountain. So these are just three keywords. Say we did our keyword research. These are the ones we found. Now, as far as the number of keywords you want for a manual, right now I'm seeing the sweet spot to be around 20 to 40 keywords. After this, the impressions really, really drop off if you have any more than that. And they're just not gonna get, uh, it's, it's gonna hurt the overall quality of your campaign if you start to get non-relevant words in there. So keep them very relevant, keep them 20 to 40 for the overall just to start. Now, one big thing, you do not want bid plus turned on. Don't do this. This is this is something you could talk about later. You can discuss once you're a more established seller and you want to be more aggressive with your ads. But you do not need this in the beginning. So we have our three keywords here. We're going to add these keywords for keyword bids. This is where if you've been running an auto campaign, you can have some idea what your clicks are going to cost you. But just to run through this again, the suggested bid that they give you, so they're suggesting this keyword to be 51 cents. And they're giving you a range from 34 to 76. Now this range is this 34 cent bid is actually the 25th percentile. So if you bid 34 cents, you're going to beat 25% of the people bidding. If you bid 76 cents, if that's only the 75th percentile. So you're only going to beat 75% of people bidding on that keyword. Essentially, there's, I mean, there's always going to be a little more that goes into it. But technically, if you want to win 100% of the time, you need to take this, this uh, upper range and increase it by another 25% and maybe a little more just for good measure. So those are kind of what those numbers mean. If you don't have a lot of PPC data, I think it's pretty safe to start the bids you know, somewhere in this range, or if you've gone through the extra steps of knowing your profitability and kind of knowing how many clicks you're going to need to get a sale and stay profitable, 
then certainly those are the numbers you want to use. But if you haven't done any of that, these, these suggested bids are getting a lot better. So we have our three keyword bids. Let's just apply these for now. Um, but again, these likely aren't going to win the bids most of the time, but it's good to start off. Now, negative keywords. They have made this a part of the campaign. It used to be when creating a campaign, this wasn't an option here for the negative keywords. But the biggest thing people ask is, how do I add negative keywords across the ad groups in my campaigns so they don't compete with each other? Okay, so this is the biggest thing. If you think about it, if you have Bamboo Fountain as a broad match keyword, and you have Bamboo Fountain as a phrase match keyword, those two keywords are going to be bidding on very similar keywords, and they're going to be overlapping. Now, there's a lot of software that you can use that can help you set up campaigns and, and structure these and make it easier but one good rule of thumb and again this doesn't always work this is where it gets finicky and this is the more advanced stuff but what you want to do is if you're in broad so we have these three keywords here you want to take those same exact three keywords bamboo fountain bamboo water fountain and garden fountain and add them as a negative phrase okay so what this does is in your broad match now you're not going to show up for anything that has bamboo fountain in it but you're still bidding on the keyword bamboo fountain so this is going to switch the order around it's going to go say maybe fountain made of bamboo or something like that it, it's just going to take it one step further because what you want to do is you want to focus on these keywords in the phrase match. So you really need to think about the campaigns as more of a tiered level where broad broad is kind of the first line of defense. It's one step above the auto, but you still want to make sure that the, the broad match isn't going crazy and it's not pulling in all these non-relevant keywords. So that's why you add in these negative phrase keywords. And then what you would do is you're going to add these same exact keywords as phrase match, which is even more targeted. And you're not going to have these negative keywords in there. So this just really gives more control over your front. So let's let's do this. So we've added our three broad keywords. Again, you're going to you're going to want 20 to 40 keywords in here. You're going to add them as negative phrase matches as well. And you're going to launch your campaign. OK, then you can come in here and edit campaign. So you see, these are the main campaigns. You come over here to ad groups. You have your broad ad group. You have your keywords. Now you create your second ad group. Your second ad group is going to be phrase because we're only using phrase match keywords. Match type, make sure this is phrase and we're going to do bamboo fountain, bamboo water fountain, and garden fountain. We are going to add these as phrase match. Now you'll see these bids here are going to be different because phrase match is a little more competitive, it's a little more targeted. Let's just add these again. Again, keyword bids are tricky. Uh, if you know your numbers, you should be able to target this profitability exactly. But if you're just beginning, you can, these are a pretty good rule of thumb to start. Now, back to the negative keywords. We don't want to add these as negative phrase because we've already added them as negative phrase in the broad. If we add them here, it's going to completely cut them out. So what I would do here is in your, when you're in your phrase, I guess I should have copied and pasted these, is uh, so you add them as, Negative exact. Now, th this isn't something that I would do right off the bat, especially if you're researching. Because obviously, these are the most relevant keywords. That, that's why you put them in here. So I would avoid this step, but this is just kind of the theory behind it, is if you're going from broad to phrase to exact. For broad, you want to add it as negative phrase. For phrase, you want to add it as negative exact. 
and then exact, you don't need any negative keywords in there. So that's kind of how you think of your tiered keyword structure is there's a tiered negative keyword structure that goes along with it. So again, I wouldn't add these for now because you want to get data on these keywords. And we go to create added group. Now, this is only the research campaign. So that's just a very basic kind of step-by-step -step process of, again, the keyword research, the free keyword tools you can have, and then the broad and phrase match groups, ad groups. One more thing is there's also negative keywords on the campaign level. I think the best example here I can go through is these are keywords that you know you might get searches for, but they're not relevant. The best example is if you're selling a supplement, there's a lot of supplements now that apply to humans and dogs. Okay, so like a joint support supplement for humans or joint support supplement for dogs. If you're selling a product that is only for humans, but you know people search for it for dogs, on the campaign level is when you would want to come in here, add negative keywords, and add things like dog, cat, pet. So you add this to the whole campaign so that none of your keywords are gonna get impression for those. Now, campaign level, negative phrase keywords are very, very powerful. You wanna make sure you add those only if you're 100% sure that you have kind of whole product category searches that you wanna knock out of your campaigns. Other than that, when you're adding your ad groups, you go in and you add, one second here, you add the negative keywords to the ad group level. So here we're in the broad match, come over to negative keywords, we see the ones we added, okay? Because these are gonna stop these from competing on the, with the phrase match keywords. I know that's a lot, but that's just a very basic manual campaign. That's the first one you should have running. After this, there's many, many more manual campaigns you should have running that should have different targeting types, different bids, different, different things that go along with them. But for now, that's kind of it. And I hopefully that gives you a better idea of the negative keywords. I know those are really tripping a lot of people up, but just make sure when you add those, you know exactly what you're adding with the negatives. All right, guys, let me know if you have any questions.